salt making factory who say in this nuclear age business is booming swords just who would want these old-time weapons of war in fact they're now only a colorful part of military and political ceremony but this has made little difference to the craftsmen who still retain many of the traditional sword making skills There's perfection at every stage, even in the casting of the ornamental brass hilts and handles. The hardened brass, like some press-out piece from a child's constructional set, is only the first hint of craftsmanship. That comes into its own with the making of the blade, although the shaped rollers are an automated version of the old blacksmith's hammer. A 12-inch bar of sword steel will double its length in these rollers and come down to a quarter-inch thickness. It's not until the fingertip stage of sharpening the blade that the sparks really begin to fly. It's a job where you must always keep your eye in because there's no machine to do it for you. To harden and temper the sword, it's dipped several times into whale oil, then afterwards into molten lead. There's a final twist or two in the clamp to make sure of that eye inspecting straightness. Strange as it may seem, there's a test which looks capable of blunting, if not ruining a new saw. Yet it's often the steel block that suffers a few chips. Patterns are really the same on swords these days. British colonies winning independence often order swords and there's a new craze among business companies to have one specially designed instead of a plaque or house flag. All the hand-painted care and design which goes onto the blade deserves a guarantee of complete preservation when it's given a final coating of gold, silver, nickel, rhodium or chromium. Only the handles and scabbards remain to be fitted. In this way, the astonishingly high number of 5,000 swords a year are made. So many fighting blades, yet so few now raised in anger. It's strange, isn't it, that in this modern world of ours, which has brought vast technical progress, there's a flourishing financial future in scrap, model cars and swords. History will always find a place for these museum pieces of the fighting past, as they have in one factory where, in an impressive collection, the famed Sword of Stalingrad earns pride of place. <laughs>